the stoat. Here one moment, gone the next. It's impossible to know where you're going to see them or what you might see. They're unpredictable and sometimes seem quite mad. This is the lovable side to their nature, but there's also a more savage side, for stoats are ruthless killers. This is Mount Grace Priory in North Yorkshire. It's cold and bleak at the moment, but last summer something very special happened here. We were lucky enough to find and follow a family of wild stoats. This is a film of their extraordinary summer. We spent several days watching a female stoat in the area below the old manor house before we found her den. 20th of May, 6 o'clock in the morning. This is one of the youngsters. The others are in the den inside the lock itself. To find a stoat's den in the wild is extremely unusual, but the priory grounds, being open to the public, are well maintained by gardeners and staff, and the stoats have got used to being watched. Some of them are distinctly marked. We call this one Ruddle. They've already got the characteristic black tip to the tail, so we think they're about six weeks old. Six hundred years ago, the monks spent most of their day closeted like hermits, praying and fasting. They didn't eat meat, but they employed lay servants to guard domestic rabbits, specially imported from France, to feed important guests. There were few wild rabbits in Britain then, but in the 16th century, Henry VIII sacked the monasteries, and the rabbits escaped. The servants also tended the carp ponds, for the monks were allowed to eat fish. The monks may have departed, but they left behind a perfect hunting ground for stoats. On the 22nd of May, we saw our female hunting near the rabbit warrens. Although stoats are tiny animals, only about 12 inches long without their tail, their prey can be much bigger. She moves at speed through thick cover, making it impossibly difficult to know where she might reappear. The neck bite is quick, death virtually instantaneous. An adult rabbit can weigh between five and eight times more than a stoat, making the lug back to the den a laborious task. Without the benefit of slow motion film, it can be difficult to distinguish stoats from their other close relatives in Britain. There's confusion with polecats, ermines and weasels. But the best rule is that it's probably a weasel if it doesn't have a black tip to the tail. That is, 
if you get a chance to see one properly. For weasels are even more elusive than stoats, and being much smaller can squeeze into holes that stoats can't, keeping on the tracks of mice and voles. The skull is the largest part of a weasel, so if the weasel's head can squeeze through, then the rest can follow. The pursuit is relentless right to the nest. Such small, hyperactive animals have to eat every few hours. Like its prey, the weasel is unlikely to survive more than one winter. In the highlands of Scotland, you may glimpse a beautiful snow-white animal known as the ermine. The ermine is a stoat. The black tip to the tail gives it away. But Scottish stoats can moult from brown to white in winter. Back at the Priory, it's the 10th of June. Moorhens enjoy the peace and tranquility of the Priory ponds and nest in the reeds. Earlier in the day, Mother Stoat was spotted in the area by one of the gardeners. The moorhen leaves her nest in order to feed. And as we thought might happen, the stoat is back. Using the cover, she works down to the pond. Though it's known that stoats like eating birds and eggs, in this case it seems she's not after the moorhen. The stoat is in the nest, and though it could easily kill the moorhen, it seems to prefer the eggs. Forty minutes later, she's seen in the orchard, looking highly mischievous. She seems to be checking rabbit burrows. Sometimes a doe rabbit will leave her litter unattended while she grazes. Stoat chasing rabbit? Or rabbit chasing stoat? Our cameraman isn't sure. We slow the film. The rabbit's mother instincts have very bravely driven the predator away, but the mother stoat has her own strong instincts. Her kits have still not had a feed today. Despite the chase, she seems determined to investigate more burrows. She's got a young rabbit. Yet, for some reason, she's not heading back to her kits. Has she abandoned them? It looks as though she's heading for the old herb garden. She's back. She must have dropped the rabbit somewhere in the undergrowth. Another baby rabbit out. She must be raiding a nest. Back 
and forth, always in the same direction. She seems to be storing them in the herb garden. But why isn't she taking them back to her young? Next day, 11th of June, the female rounds up her entire litter and they're clearly on the move. To see this sight in the British countryside is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The camera can hardly keep up with them, but unless they're fast, they're vulnerable to buzzards and foxes. Even though they're all together, we lose sight of them in the old herb garden. We don't find them again until they appear by an old stump. As usual, Ruddle is first. One of the kits emerges with the hindquarters of a rabbit. So this is where the female was taking her earlier kills. It seems she had the foresight to prepare this new den by packing it with food, perhaps to help settle the kits. The tree stump is closer to her favorite hunting grounds, both rabbits and carp ponds. Our stoat has also timed her move well. There are several broods of ducklings on the water. Easy prey for a stoat. If either mallard or moorhens lose their young, they simply start again. Unlike stoats, moorhens can rear up to three clutches of young each summer and they may need to. This close supply of food is essential for the young stoats, as they are now eating more than ever. It seems that the mother stoat must have checked out the new den long before the move feeling the need to give them more room inside to eat and more room out to play. They're showing signs that they're developing adult skills, the bite, for instance, or the pounce. The young stoats are now 11 weeks old. The female is spending very little time at the new den as she has to keep up with the cub's enormous appetite. She drops the food in but can't stay as she has to get hunting again. Which raises the question, where is the father, the dog stoat? 
He plays no part in the rearing of his offspring and his home range will be considerably larger than hers, incorporating possibly two more females. That the mother stoat can provide enough food for her kits is remarkable, but to provide a surplus is a greater achievement and means that as well as having food to eat, the kits also have food to play with. If there are no siblings around to torment, the prey becomes dog-eared and torn like an old toy. June gives way to a scorching July. The youngsters are seen less at the stump and can appear almost anywhere in the Priory grounds. On the 3rd of July, we stumble across two siblings in the meadow above the carp pond and try to puzzle out what they're up to. Is this play or dance, the infamous dance of death that is mentioned in legends about stoats? The manic dance is believed to hypnotize the prey, allowing the stoat to get close enough to strike. Even more fascinating, they appear to be role-playing, taking it in turns to act the passive victim and the demonic dancer of legend. Experts generally agree that stoats do use this hypnotic dance to disguise an attack, but they do not suck the blood of their victims, vampire-like, as folklore would have us believe. However, as night falls, another weaselly-looking relative of the stoat, the polecat, is planning murder in the dark. With its bandit-like face mask, the secretive polecat leaves its nest to hunt. But only when the night has become alive with the scuttles and scurries of other animals. Whereas stoats try and avoid living too close to man, the polecat can be thoroughly at home there, often choosing busy farmyards to lurk in by night. particularly when there is an abundance of rats. A polecat can and will follow a rat everywhere. Being found in farm buildings with chickens hasn't helped the polecat's reputation. But polecats are far more keen on rat catching. Eleventh of July, ten o'clock in the morning. The priory has been open a few hours to the public already, and our stoats have been spotted up in the great cloister. They're about three months old now and are more agile than ever. 
Though playful and just as mad, they appear more aggressive and purposeful in their attacks. One scent marks the ground, the other reacts as though threatened. In fact, this game is getting a little too boisterous. The young male stoats won't be able to stay together in the Priory grounds forever. They may wander up to 15 kilometres from here in search of their own patch of females. But not yet. There are more games to be played. Sometimes our stoats in the Great Cloister quite literally just disappear. The secret to their trick was in a 14th century map of the monks' drainage system. By going down the drain into a network of underground tunnels, the stoats can reappear 150 metres below the priory, right back at the carp ponds. Stoats are thought not to like water out of choice, except when having to swim when hunting waterfowl or their nests. But ours seem to enjoy it. Perhaps the hot July days made the water more enticing. They appear hyperactive and hungry. This one pulls out of the water what looks like a pebble. The moorhen chick is swimming carelessly close to the revellers. More trouble. Ruddle has joined in. The female moorhen flies in, but there's little she can do against this gang of sharp teeth. For a minute, it looks as though the stoats have got bored with the chase, but the trouble is far from over.
Mother Stoat comes in with a rabbit. By leaving the rabbit for the young to feed on, the mother stoat has unwittingly saved the moorhen's chick. By the middle of July, the stoat's range has extended to the car park and the fields beyond. They're now fast, fit, unpredictable and difficult to find. They can appear anywhere within a radius of 500 metres from their second den. It's the alarm calls of the blackbirds that help give their presence away. Adding to the difficulty of seeing them is that they can also be high in the trees. Stoats are as agile as any squirrel, yet to see them like this is an extremely unusual sight. Nowhere is sacred. The stonemason's yard turns into an excellent playground for a game of hide and seek. Is he inside or out? This end or the other? It's difficult to watch these enchanting creatures for three months without falling completely under their spell. So this diary doesn't have a last page. Our stoats are still there and in the summer we plan to be back. Next week, Wildlife on One investigates a most unbird-like bird. With eyelashes like Sophia Loren and a figure like Robbie Coltrane, this is the African ground hornbill. Comical it may look, but comical it is not. To some, this is the hornbill from hell. The stars of Stoats in the Priory are featured in the April issue of BBC Wildlife magazine, on sale now.